Hello YouTube, it's Emma Blue Eyes 10 here with um, the Blue Eyes Hieroglyph Dragon deck update that I promised and I realised that I've been doing quite a few videos on Dev Pro recently and I haven't done anything on Dual Network so I figured, you know, why not do it on Dual Network for once so I hope you guys enjoy. Now, this deck idea came to me because I've seen quite a few variants of this um, deck on YouTube and everything. I've seen Synchro variants, Chaos variants, Turbo variants and I've always wanted to try it, but I wasn't entirely sure how to go around it. So this is my take on the Blue Eyes Heretics, and I hope you enjoy. If you have any suggestions for improvements or anything like that, please let me know down in the comments below. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to startle you there. Anyway, let's get on with the deck review, shall we? Now... For the Blue Eyes Heretics, we have three Blue Eyes White Dragon, of course. Um, some Heretic variants do use two because it's more consistent and comfortable that way, but I personally use three because I personally believe that it's not a true Blue Eyes deck unless you use three Blue Eyes White Dragon. Then we have three Maiden with Eyes of Blue to special summon the Blue Eyes from Hand Deck or Graveyard, basically. Um, she's also the a stall card of the deck in that if the heretic engine in isn't going as well as I hoped or isn't going as fast as I want it to be then she can stall the opponent out for a few turns until that engine starts to kick in. Next we have three heretic dragon of Su, the Egyptian god of air. All the heretics have an ability of when they themselves are tributed by other heretics effects and everything they can special summon one normal dragon type monster from the hand deck or graveyard and its attack and defense go to zero. So this makes it really easy to XYZ summon and synchro summon in some cases. And the basic engine of heretics is three dragon of Su, who's the Egyptian god of air. He's got an effect where he can destroy spells and trap cards that are on the opponent's side. Three, Heretic Dragon of Tefnu, uh, the Goddess of Moisture. She is basically a cyber dragon. That's the only way to describe her. Then we have three, Dragon of Nethbet, who is the Egyptian Goddess Nephthys, the Goddess of Funerary Rites. She's got an effect similar to Sue, where she targets opponents' monsters and destroys them. Then we have three, Heretic Dragon of Eset, or Isis, the Egyptian Mother Goddess. Queen of the Gods, and my favourite Heratic Dragon. Um, her effect allows the ability to XYZ summon, makes it a lot easier because she targets a normal type dragon monster on the field and the levels of all face-up Heratic monsters that are on the field become the same level. So it's basically spam, I suppose, XYZ spam. Um, is it spam or swarm? Well, what You know what I mean, okay? So please don't take that the wrong way. Um, and, uh, you know, she makes it just XYZ and, and even in some cases synchroing a lot easier. Then we have one Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon because, again, we do have a lot of high levels in the deck and it makes it easier to summon out. One Honest, 90% of the deck is light. I don't really need to explain that. Then we have Luster Dragon number two and a normal Luster Dragon. Now, I explained in the previous video um, why I chose these dragons over Alexandrite and... Um, Labradite or even Wattili Dragon, so I'll quickly explain again in this video. Um, the colours blue and green in Egyptian myth and lore and everyday life uh, signified life. Now, blue was used also in death and, rebir death and rebirth and all that connection to the afterlife, but it was both these colours were mainly seen as the symbols of life in ancient Egyptian culture, hence why a lot of their jewellery, their art, their sculptures and that were often painted with these kind of colours because it represented to them life in general. I mean, if you live in a fertile valley with a blue river that gives um, lush vegetation with its floods in that every year, I think you would probably come to see that as a as those colours as life-giving symbols. So that's the reason why I've chosen them. It's to keep in with the Egyptian theme, I suppose. Next, we have three Heretic Seal of Convocation to add Heretics from the deck to the hand. Then we've got the staples of a Book of Moon and a Dark Coat. I've got Burial from a different dimension. I'll explain that in just a moment. One Dragon's Mirror for Fusion. Three Forbidden Lance because three Forbidden Lance is just very, very good. Then we have two Magic Planter to send up continuous trap cards to the graveyard that I control to draw two cards. Then we have two Wonder Wand to target the Maiden, of course, and to give a bit of draw power. Three Heretic Seal from the Ashes. A Foolish Burial on the opponent's turn, a Burial from a different dimension on my turn, and a Call of the Haunted in general when it's sent from the field to the graveyard. It's a very, very good card, and comboing with the Magic Planter you can get back a lot of heretics from the graveyard, no problem. Also very good with the Drag's Mirror combo if I 
um, like fusion their heretics for a five-headed dragon. It means I can get my heretics back into the graveyard if needed. Then we have two fiendish chain. I'm still debating if I want to add a third one there so the deck will go up to 41, 42 cards. But me being an OCD with the card numbers in my deck, I actually want to try and get this deck this car bleh, excuse me this tech limit down to 40 so if you guys have got any suggestions on what to take out or anything please let me know down in the comments below for the extra deck now we have one blowout ultimate dragon just because i can then we've got one five-headed dragon and um, this is the reason why i've got burial in there is because if i use any of the blue eyes cards for a five-headed dragon fusion burial allows me to return the blue eyes back into the graveyard just because if the heretic engine doesn't have any level 8 targets um, in order to XYZ summon then that whole engine kind of goes down the drain. So Burial is there even though it's not probably not going to be a good card for early game and everything. It's a it's a it's there just in case I have to use the blue eyes for a five headed dragon fusion summon and it allows me to get the blue eyes back in order to XYZ further with the heretic engine. So I hope you guys understand that. Next we have two Azurai's Silver Dragon. I think two is more than adequate because I probably won't be going into it as much, but it's good to have there just in case. Then we've got one Black Rose Dragon, a Maiden with Eyes of Blue and a level 6 Heratic Dragon, just to reset the whole field, just in case. Then we have one Die Gustav Emerald, which is a mini pot of Avery's in a way and also allows me to special summon a non-effect monster graveyard. So bringing back any of my normal monsters and they become a 3024 attack, 19 attack beat stick basically. One Queen Dragoon Jin. It stops the dragons being destroyed by battle and yes, unfortunately it would negate a lot of the heretics effects and everything unless I want to resurrect them for other purposes and everything. But the main aim is going to of course resurrect the normal dragons because they become full powered beat sticks. One Utopia to negate attacks, three Heretic Dr King of a Tomb um, to special summon dragons from the deck, and then the main aim of the deck besides getting out of course the blue eyes or anything is Heretic Sun Dragon Overlord of Heliopolis which has got a great effect of singularity destruction. So anyway, that's it for this deck review, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as I said, uh, I'm kind of in the air at the moment whether or not I'm going to build this deck in real life, I mean... Um, it's still I'm still debating on it because I've already got my heretics. Well, they're they're about 90, 80, 80, 90 percent built at the moment. I still need a few more cards to get that. But um, so I'm still in debate about this. But I thought it was a fun idea. I thought I'd do it, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys are quite happy to see the actual deck review of this. So as I said, if you have any comments about how to improve this deck, what to take out, or Ticks, um, tips, ticks. What am I saying? Oh my goodness. Tips and tricks, sorry, um, that could help out this deck review. Please let me know down in the comments below. Until then, take care. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!